Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Natalie the Dawn. This last match is going to be between 400 and Sanic, and I remain your host, Shadow Fury333. We're on Icy Shell, which is about the only flat map I've done today. Although, even then, it's not that flat. It's actually got the whole hill in the center that vehicles can't deal with. So, let's see what the players go for factory wise. 400 in the. Sorry, Sanic in the northeast side of the map, going for Cloaky Bot Factory, eventually. And 400 going. F what are they going for? Going for light vehicles. Okay, so 400 seeding the center in favor of map control and rapid harassment. I'm guessing 400 is going to try to go for a Scorcher Dive right away. And no, two darts right off the bat. Sanic going for two for five glaives. Sanic going for the heavy attack. And for, excuse me, 400 going for the slasher. Five slashes right out of the gate, which is going to be helpful against the glaives. Although, hmm. It's expensive, but yeah. We have the moving defenders. And 400 going for the center position, which is interesting. That's commonly a defensive position. But I'm not really sure if 400 is a defensive player. We've seen a lot of games today where 400 has been really expanding a lot. And I think the reason they went to the center is because that way they can expand evenly to the east and west. Or east and west. East is to the right. So yeah, that's the thing. They are going to be able to expand a lot faster from this position. But it's also risky. Because, well... Obviously, they are flankable. Quite easily flankable, in fact. However, Sanic doesn't have the units with which to do that. I mean, the Glaives didn't really accomplish much. It looks like the Glaives actually got stopped. They aren't even being built. Like, there weren't even five Glaives built. There were two Glaives built. And both of them are dead. Sanic switching over to the Warrior, figuring that he'll be able to just plow down through the Slasher, which isn't a bad idea. Slashers don't deal a huge amount of damage. They deal a high damage per second. But Warriors can tank that, and indeed, the Warrior coming in here, Slashes are really weird that way. Like, as a Skirmisher, they are not really normal. They're actually almost more of a Riot unit, in a sense. Like, they can be used against slower Riots, but there aren't really slower Riots. If you fight move, then they will try to kite. But even then, because they have to stop to fire, Riots can get in. They're actually almost more just a really useful Assault Force. That's pretty much what they are. They're not a skirmisher in the typical sense. They don't fight riots. They just tear stuff down. They find stuff and tear it down. And they usually come out of the fog of war too, so it's almost a bit of an ambush force. But yeah, this one... And it, it's not even on fight mode, so it's not trying to stop and shoot when it can. I, I think 400 might not realize... I mean, I pointed out in the Desert Needle game that I think 400 doesn't know a lot of the a lot of the little tricks that 0k lets you do UI wise for instance if you put if you put a slasher on fight move it'll actually kite whatever it's shooting at like it'll automatically kite whatever it's shooting at optimally or at least it'll kite it in a way that probably won't die that is a new thing though that was added I think four or five months ago it's not that recent sorry it's not that it isn't that recent but it's not that old either But yeah, Slash is continuing to come in, and 400 building more of them. But yeah, there we go. This is exactly what I was talking about. 400 expanding along both sides. Very rapidly taking both sides. The commander is the plan to take the center, which makes sense, I suppose. I mean, the commander can take the center, and everything else with vehicles can just run around quickly. I just don't understand. I guess, like I said, I guess fight move isn't being used because... Although, at this point, 400 might realize fight move actually does that trick with the... Okay, obviously you need to move it a bit closer. That's actually a bit of a problem. I hadn't noticed that. Huh. Okay, that actually might explain why 400 was not using fight move. Because apparently fight move isn't actually great if you're trying to attack something that's running away. It's great if you're trying to get if you're trying to kite, but for running away, no, it's actually apparently it does not fire quickly enough. Like it stops when the unit is in range, not when the unit is in range, and given the unit's current velocity, the unit will remain in range by the time this flasher deploys and fires. So yeah, that would have actually dealt more damage if the slasher had moved in and then fight moved from inside. Although maybe not even then, because then the fight move would have stopped, and then it would have continued on that weird path that the warrior is just moving fast enough that the slasher can't deal with it. So yeah, that's actually a bit of a bug. 
Although, fixing that would be rather difficult. I mean, maybe not. Because all you have to do is figure out if, given the unit's velocity vector and the time it would take to deploy, whether or not the slasher would be able to deploy and fire in the time it took for the unit to move. And if not, then don't bother deploying and firing. Oh, okay, apparently, well, yeah, I mean, Skazi pointing out that it's a toggleable thing. Most of these things that I talked about, most of these little UI tricks and unit AI tricks, they're toggleable. There's a, there is a unit AI toggle in every unit. So you can turn it off if you'd like. Ah, that leveler. Didn't do a terrible job, but not quite good enough. Only one leveler is really risky for trying to defend a base. So yeah, that is... That's a thing. So this is what I'm talking about, though. Sanic is able to flank 400 very effectively. Because 400 doesn't have a huge amount of defense, they are spread rather thin. And they're focusing a lot on slashes for defense, but also for offense. So they're spreading their defense into their offense. And I realize you kind of do that with your economy to begin with, but this is more direct. And it looks like slashers... Do slashers win? No, slashers lose against defenders. They have a slight range disadvantage. 10 Elmo's range disadvantage, but it's enough. And the Glaive is trying to get rid of everything here. And succeeding, actually. Yeah, that... That didn't work out too badly, I don't think. I mean, 400 did manage to defend, but Sanic's still dealing damage. It's still breaking through. What? My stream's down. Ah, whatever. Anyway, the this looks like it's probably going to be Sanic's game, which is a little bit odd. I, mean, I expected 400 to be able to get a lot of economy and really power through, but Sanic has just been moving around everything. I mean, 400 hasn't even gotten the center metal extractor, which I expected they would at their commander, but no, they haven't. And the fact that they have it is probably doing them a lot of harm. Because right now, Sanic is set up. And 400 is trying to punch through the front door. Why are they not trying to go around the side? They're playing light vehicles. They're playing much faster. Well, not much faster units. Glaives are about as fast. But as a rule, they're playing much faster, tougher units. They can get a bunch of Ravagers, go along the western side of the map, flank the entire thing. And they know it, right? They know they can. Well, they know that they can't along the eastern side, at least. And they have radar along the west, so they actually do know. Like, 400 knows Sanic as an open western side. And it looks like they're finally sending some levelers over to the west, but that's about it. No ravagers or anything. I mean, levelers kind of make sense, but for Sprapid Assault Force, ravagers are awesome. Ravagers are really quick units and tanky. They're great that way. And Sanic going for their own Assault Force, Warrior, Zeus, some Rockos, and the Hammers to try to get rid of what they can. I mean, just get rid of the slashers before the slashers are a problem. Not that there are any more slashers anymore. And there we go, 400 finally going for the Ravagers. Does have a few Wolverines, which is nice, but finally the Ravagers are being built. Because Levelers, while okay for defense and okay for offense, they're not Ravagers. And when you're dealing with stuff like Stardusts, they're really not Ravagers. This one, though, the Wolverines moving to their deaths. Ravagers are trying to help defend here. This is going to work out not great. This is actually going to be pretty terrible. In fact, I think that this might be Sanic's winning move. Nope, Sanic pulling back. They're a bit too concerned. That'll allow 400 to build up a bunch of Ravagers. Sanic does not have the economy right now. Like, Sanic doesn't have the economy to be making safe plays like that. They need to be harassing. They need to be moving around the map. They need to be tearing apart what army 400 has as as best as they can, as efficiently as possible, so that 400 can't build up a giant army that Sanic cannot deal with. And that's just not happening. The Glaives are going to try, but it looks like... Well, actually, they might work. They might just work. And Slashes are, are in play, so that will really hurt the Glaives' chances. Now, the Glaives will be able to deal a bit of damage, but unfortunately... Sanic took a little bit too long. Although, actually, wait a sec. No, 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 no. This is great. Sanic in just the perfect position, getting rid of one of the two of these. No, one of these masons. Only one is going to die. But still, slowing the production down a little bit. 
At the very least, that puts 400 into a slightly more awkward position, and Rocco's coming along the eastern mountains as well, while at the same time, Leveler over to the north, trying to just manage what he can. Excuse me, but the problem, of course, for Sanic right now is these Glaives going to the north, which are going to hit the Levelers and die. And to the south, I mean, there's Rockers coming in, which will help get rid of these Lotuses. Actually, maybe not. No, if these if these Glaives surround the Leveler, the Leveler's going to die. If these Glaives move north right now, like right this second, not, not even, this is too late. This is way too late. Sanic is not paying attention to the Glaives. They needed to have paid attention to those Glaives. They wanted to get rid of the Leveler. Because now the Glaives are going to die because splash attacks are just too much. <sighs> so close. But unfortunately, paying more attention. I think they were trying to micro out the Rockos here. But yeah, if they wanted to get rid of that Leveler that's assaulting their base, they needed to have been really on point with that micro. Because Glaives do not beat Levelers. Not easily. They can, but they basically need to have spread out and they need about five or six of them in order to beat one Leveler. And you'll still lose like two or three. And Scythe's coming up as well, which... I mean, that Scythe from Sanic, not a bad thing to have. But there's just so much defense from 400 that it's really hard to set up. Which is weird. Alright, it looks like Sanic... They're definitely getting their economy up. They're building up the south, sorry, the north side of the map, northwest side of the map. North center's been lost and hasn't been rebuilt yet. Looks like something took out the leveler. What the heck took out the leveler? I guess more glaives must have pushed up north to get rid of the leveler. And the scythe finally being able to deal some damage behind the factory too, which, ooh, hitting the factory, not the masons. I mean, it wouldn't have killed the mason, but still, you always want to go for masons and caretakers first. And nice assault over to the southeast as well, getting rid of the southeast expansion. Sanic putting 400 in the same position. 400 had put Magman in game two in the Desert Needle game, as I recall. Just attacking from all sides, making... Or no, the Cold Snap game. With Ikens. Attacking from all, from all sides, making it really hard to deal with any one attack. That's what Sanic is doing right now, and it's working well because it's distracting 400 from their assault. And at this point, Sanic, able to build up their economy to be on par with 400... We're just about. It's not quite there yet, but still pretty close. Unfortunately, with that Stardust down, that will open up the western side very much so to 400. Like, 400 is basically just going to power through probably a bunch of Raptors to the western side. Although, I don't know. 400 has been so focused on trying to beat down the eastern front, I have no idea. And no one's gone for the center expansion for whatever reason. At all. Ever. Oh, nice sight there. That was really close, too. I mean, it wasn't... It wasn't so close that it was impossible or near impossible, but yeah, that was still a good micro, getting between the defenders there. So using that site to figure out what's going on, Sanic getting some good scouting information. Okay, they're just gonna they're gonna sacrifice scouting information for killing things. Get rid of that radar tower, making it clear that there is in fact a scythe, and we are seeing an air pad. That's unusual. A few ravens being built up. Possibly to get rid of the Lotuses. Sorry, the Lotuses. The, well, possibly get rid of the Lotuses. I doubt it, though. Probably to get rid of the Masons and the and the Caretakers here. Because if those are gotten rid of, that'll really slow down 400's production. 400 still has the economic advantage, but if Santa can get rid of that production advantage, then 400 will just start excessing. Although, of course, the other option would be to just send these in and then one of them to each metal extractor. That's another option entirely. And at the same time, 400 losing a lot of metal extractors to the western side of the map. A lot of reclaim working in their favor, but not much else. And Sanic's commander also reclaiming on the front lines. Getting a lot of their own units reclaimed, so that's good. That's what they need. I don't think Sanic's going to be using these ravens to hit individual metal extractors all at once. They probably should. Or hit caretakers all at once. Because caretakers, 500, no, that's not going to kill them. It would need to be two each to kill them. But still, that's a lot of damage that could be dealt, theoretically. But now, Sanic not using these. I don't know what they're waiting for. Oh, wait. Wait, no! They're going for the commander! Why? I mean, I guess that's additional firepower and additional construction power, but... This is kind of late in the game. 
like 400 has and they're, they would you would know they would have quite a strong economy losing their commander does mean they can't continue to build up which isn't bad but you could have gotten rid of them I don't know it's not a terrible idea I just don't agree with it myself like using ravens to destroy a commander is such a 2014 strategy like it's and the reason it's no longer done is because commanders just well getting raven skill commanders is really expensive and it's there's a lot of nerfs that have been done to ravens so gunships have become more popular and also really even when it was done a lot i don't really know why it was done i think it was because commanders were seen as this big powerful thing which when your opponent has 30 metal per second they're not but also because commanders I mean, yeah, they are a frontline construction force that's really hard to just dislodge as they start building up defenses. That's a fair point. However, that being said, I would still say that overall, ravens can kill... They can one-shot metal extractors. You can have four ravens, one-shot four metal extractors, reducing your opponent's economy by probably eight metal per second. Like, using the ravens on metal extractors, assuming that your opponent's commander is not so far forward that they are being a direct threat. This case, I agree with, kind of, because they're a direct threat. 400 wins?! Oh, wow, I guess Sanic just realized just how much 400 had and decided they couldn't deal with it, which... They had four Ravens. And there was no dedicated anti-air. What? Sanic could have wiped out 400's economy in two passes of Ravens. I don't quite understand the logic there. Like, seriously, one pass over here, and another pass over here. Not the main base. Not the main base. That would be a terrible idea. But one pass here, one pass here, that's, like, this one second, because there's so many defenders. But one pass here, there's no defenses, just tear it apart. Don't go for the main base, because that'll be rebuilt way too quickly. But go for the, par the parts that can be attacked, and even here, maybe not so much. But definitely, the southeast. I don't know. <sighs> I guess it's... I mean, 400 did have a unit advantage, so there is that. Yeah, I, I don't know. Sanic... I feel like they had a decent shot as 400 was pounding way too much in the east, on the eastern front. But then 400 went for the western front, which is kind of what I mentioned earlier, and that that did the trick, because Sanic didn't really think of the western front too much, and 400 did, eventually. Both players were way too focused on the eastern front, though, I think. I don't know. I think neither one w wanted to go for the 5 metal per second because they thought it'd be destroyed, which once again makes no sense to me. Like, that just doesn't make any sense to me. I don't understand the thinking. I mean, I kind of understand the thinking, but I don't totally understand the thinking. Remember, metal extractors cost 75 metal to build. That's assuming it's the first time and you aren't reclaiming them first. If you are reclaiming them first, you're basically spending 40 metal. So, they cost 75 metal to build. Most metal extractors give 2 metal per second. So, it's a payback in about 30 seconds. A little more than 30, but it's like 35 seconds. So, you get paid back in 35 seconds. If you can keep that metal extractor alive for more than 35 seconds, it was worth building. That's for 2. For 5 metal per second, if it lasts 15 seconds, it is paid for itself. And 15 seconds is not that long of time. Like, if you're not under direct artillery fire, or there are glaives right there, it'll last for 15 seconds. It'll pay for itself. Even if it gets lost and you have to rebuild several times, it'll have paid for itself every single time. You'll get the advantage. That's the thing. It's really important to take metal extractors, even if you're not sure they're going to last, as long as it lasts for half a minute, as long as you think, well, I'm not under direct fire right now, I could probably defend it for 30 seconds or so, build it. It'll pay for itself. I realize, of course, if you're under that much pressure, you might want to build some defenses and that'll slow things down a bit, but that'll also make it more likely the metal extractor will pay for itself. So, yeah. It'll pay for itself. It'll be worth it. So I just don't know why people didn't go for that. <sighs> this is a weird game. Especially with all the glaives trying to hit levelers. Glaives do not beat levelers. And slashers don't beat warriors that are coming down at them. Light Vehicle versus Cloakybot Factor is just a weird matchup, come to think of it. Like, there's a lot of places where... I mean, okay, Levelers beat Glaives, which is what you'd expect. But, at the same time, you don't need that many Glaives to beat a Leveler. Although it's usually a by-cost thing, but still, even then, because it's low fire rate splash damage, Glaives can actually deal with that relatively easily. Because Glaives can scatter. 
Scorchers, which is what levelers I'm pretty sure are designed, or as much as design exists in this game, they're meant to deal with Scorchers, which cannot scatter. Scorchers have to go out with their own turning radius, and they can only scatter so much. Glaives can scatter in all directions. So levelers aren't as useful. And with Slashers, I mean, they're not a skirmisher unit. They're kind of skirmishy, but they're not that skirmishy. And maybe with fight move, they're skirmishy enough that you can deal with warriors. But yeah, we saw that warriors just, they take out slashes if slashes are not moving. Because slashes don't deal a huge amount of damage. But then slashes are also really effective against glaives. Which you wouldn't expect because, if you have enough of them. Because glaives, you'd think, are, ra are raiders and slashes are skirmishers. But no, slashes aren't really skirmishers. So yeah, light vehicle's a bit weird against Cloakie. But yeah, overall, it was just too much focus on the Eastern Front, I think, and a lot of units lost there. Especially for Sanic. They just lost a lot of their Warriors and Zeuses along that route. I mean, they had the Eastern Front defended. They might as well have gone over to the flank in the Western Front and caused 400 to get panicked trying to split their forces between the two. Anyhow, that's that. So, thanks for watching. That's going to be it for me tonight. I hope you enjoyed that, and have a good night, everyone.